Welcome back to the Paddle Sports Lifestyle. A few days after my big shootout race, I went on a camping trip with Paddle KC. Christy, who is the founder of Paddle KC, planned out four days of paddling in the Ozarks that she called the Week of Rivers. Four separate days, four different rivers. It was amazing. I decided that this sounded like a lot of fun and I decided to go along because I thought it would be a good way to improve my technical skills plus get several days in a row of having my butt in the boat for six or more hours. Plus, I would meet new friends and have a great time camping because I've only camped one other time before and that was also on a Paddle KC trip. So, I packed up my Jeep and headed down to Southern Missouri for our big paddling adventure. We started out on the Current River and we had a fun first half to our first day. And I say first half because near the end of our paddle, we repeatedly came up on some motorboats. Now, the Current River isn't very wide, so there's not a lot of room to maneuver, not a lot of room for powerboats to be flying past you. And the people in the boat seemed to really enjoy watching our kayaks struggle against their wakes. Their smug facial expressions had already made me angry, but it quickly got worse. One of our paddlers had her dog Daisy with her. Daisy did not like the power boats, and she jumped off the kayak and started doggy paddling to shore. Of course, this happened right as another boat came speeding toward us. Fortunately, Daisy got to shore without being hit by the careless boater. And while this was going on, another member of our group had her boat flooded by the wake from the power boats. It was just a bunch of careless people on speedboats out on the river just looking to make life miserable for somebody. However, we all regrouped and we made it back to camp without any incidents as we're walking back to our campsite, we notice that now the campers at the campsite next to us have a sign up and it says Power Boat Nationals. This meant that if we stayed on the current river for the weekend, we would continue to deal with these people whose idea of fun was popping a beer and speeding down the river, scaring women and dogs. And if that wasn't bad enough, we realized the campsite restroom was no longer usable. The toilets had flooded, and there was poop and pee and all sorts of disgusting mess all over the women's restroom, no doubt because of our new friends who made a mess while we were away. Now, our original plan was to go to another section of the current river the next day, and then that morning as we were shuttling vehicles, we had already planned on moving campsites to something closer to the 11 Point River. So... No matter what, we only had that one last night at that particular campsite. So to get away from our less than friendly fellow campers, we changed rivers a day early and we moved to the new campsite the next morning as planned. Now, one cool thing that happened when I woke up Thursday morning was that there were horses right behind my tent, just doing their thing, grazing in the field behind me. And as I mentioned, I'm new to camping. So this was just my second camping trip. And I am starting to really love the little surprises like this. Like who would have expected horses behind my tent in the morning? I thought that was super cool. We also later in the trip discovered, I'm sure everybody else knew, but this is all new to me. I did not know that a raccoon could open a cooler. Raccoons opened a cooler and ate through a dry bag containing a whole bunch of breakfast burritos that one of our paddlers had brought for breakfast throughout the next couple of days. Anyway, so we move campsites, we go to a new river. Our experience on the 11 Point River was much better. We saw river otters, a waterfall, we paddled inside a cave, we saw some springs, and it was just beautiful. And both the 11 Point and the Current are beautiful, and I highly recommend them. If you are addicted to your technology, you should know that you will not have cell service. I think I had service for maybe 15 minutes total over the four days. And that was while we were shuttling cars 
back and forth so that we would have cars to transport our boats back to camp. So no cell service, which was kind of nice to be completely disconnected. I think this is only my second trip and I couldn't even tell you how many years where I traveled without my laptop just in case something happened. So I was completely disconnected and that was nice. A few other things happened on the 11 point river that I thought were good reminders for our MR340 crew. Some of the things that happened as we were going along the 11 point river, somebody suggested they wanted to slow down a little bit and make our trip just a slower, more leisurely pace. So everybody pulled off onto a sandbar and we decided to have a snack. Well, one of the women, as she opened up her hatch, discovered that her boat was full of water. And so it was really great that we ended up stopping because we discovered that her boat was full of water and we were able to fix it. So one of the guys got down, checked it out. We dried it off. Then they put duct tape all around the outside. And then on the inside, somebody had super glue. They super glued something plastic on the crack where the water was coming in on the inside of the hull. That was pretty much enough to keep her boat from leaking for the rest of our trip. We just wanted to make sure that she didn't go over any rocks or do anything intentionally that was going to crack that wide open again. But duct tape and super glue, we MacGyvered the heck out of that boat. Also, while we were discussing that, it came up that a product called Gator Patch is also a good thing to carry. It's super flat and easy to carry. It would take up no weight and space in your boat. And then also something called water weld, which will patch a hole and your boat doesn't have to be dry for that. I think it says it takes 20 minutes to set. So those are some things now that will be in my bags for my crew during the MR340, just in case something happens to one of the boats. The next thing that happened to us is on the 11 Point River one day, there was a sudden downpour. So at first it was sprinkling and we're all thinking, yeah, that's cool. We're in kayaks, we're in the water, no big deal. Then we heard the thunder, then we saw the lightning. And anytime there's lightning, for safety reasons, you need to get off the water. So we got off the water. It is pouring buckets. We are just drenched. Everybody kind of stopped in various places. We were all very close to each other, but different places on the bank because you can't just automatically park like, 12 boats side by side by side on the bank at a random spot. So we all get out of our boats and I open my hatch. I had already packed because I've been trying to try out different things that I might need for the 340. So I had bought these emergency rain ponchos, super small. They fit in a pack. They'll fit in a fanny pack and you can just take them with them, with you in case you encounter unexpected rain. And the nice thing about the ones I bought is that they are mylar And the temperature had dropped quite a bit as the rain came in. And so now I'm wet and I'm starting to shiver because I'm cold. So that Mylar emergency rain poncho was perfect. And I gave out as many as I had and it kind of helped us stay dry. And then we had one guy with us in a canoe. And so he flipped over his canoe and kind of rested it on two of the kayaks. And we all crawled under the canoe. It was a, uh, I think you call it a skin on frame. So it was one that was not a metal canoe. It was made out of all things that were not metal. So we got under the canoe and used that as our shelter. And then we just started talking. We had some interesting people on this trip. Some of the guys dehydrate their own food and had brought dehydrated snacks that they were sharing as we paddled. And so we just started getting in conversations about cooking and paddling and people's backgrounds and before we knew it 45 minutes had passed and the sun was back out super foggy afterwards but we were on our way and everybody in our group was safe and happy so I loved the reminder of things that I need to make sure that we have if not on board for our race in the packs that our crew will carry So that was just a a good experience overall. And then we were soaking wet, but we still went and had lunch and we saw some of the springs and we saw an old paddle wheel that was run by the waterfall. And so we just saw lots of cool, cool things. 
And on this trip, I just really loved seeing some of the dehydrated meals that some of the people made. And it inspired me to think about what kinds of things can I make to carry with me so that I have food that I don't need to worry about spoiling while we are on the MR340. And then also just some snacks for when we do kayak camping or our long training runs. When we do the 340, I am going to rely on Tailwind as my electrolyte and source of calories, but I will also need still a way to add protein. And I'd like to eat solid food as long as my stomach will tolerate it. And so these are some of the things I'm thinking about as we're having discussions about food and dehydrated meals and things that are shelf stable. So I thought that that was just a fabulous trip. I really enjoyed most of the interactions I had on this trip. And in the next episode, I'm going to tell you about some of the negative interactions I had on this trip and why it has me fired up. I hope you are having a great summer. And wherever life takes you, make it an epic adventure. Catch you next time.